69 by Ryu Murakami, book review. Uh, so, the, uh, yeah, this is a book review of uh, 69 by Ryu Murakami. Um, there was also a movie made about this book, which I also saw, and which I'll review in a separate video. Uh, this video, I just want to talk about the book. So, uh, 69 comes from 1969, so it's about the 1960s in Japan. Now, the 1960s in Japan were one of my pet historical interests. I've done a few videos on them, actually. Um, the, there was a big student movement kind of going on in the big cities, where there was kind of battles between riot police and student protesters in Tokyo and Kyoto, and universities were getting shut down and all this stuff. Um, so, there was a big thing going on. That, now, there's a couple novels that I've read that kind of deal with this. There's one called Norwegian Wood by Murakami, Murakami Haruki, which I've reviewed in a separate video. Now, Murakami Haruki, or at least his narrator, takes a very cynical view of the student protest. So, it's kind of going on the, the book Norwegian Wood takes place during the 1960s. So the student protest is going on in the background, but his character just kind of has a disdain for these student protesters. 69 by Ryu Murakami has a different take on it. His protagonist is a high school student stuck out in the countryside in Kyushu. So, you know, he's kind of seeing all this on TV or in the newspapers, all these big protests and he kind of wants to be involved with the movement somehow, but he doesn't know how. He's kind of all the way out, kind of stuck in the countryside. So he tries to kind of organize something at his high school. Um, yeah, I'll just kind of, apparently, sorry, one more thing. Apparently, I think it's autobiographical. Uh, I don't know how much autobiographical it is. I've read different things. Some, some reviews kind of portray this completely as a fictional novel. Some reviews kind of portray this as like a, what do they call it, Roman Aklef, where you kind of change everyone's names and change things around just enough so you don't get sued, but like it's basically true. The afterword at the end of the novel kind of gives, definitely gives the impression that it's true, where the author kind of talks about how his relationship has evolved with these people from his high school, how some of them were worried that he was going to write a novel about it someday, and kind of his conversations with them about now that he's actually written a novel. So, I, th I think it's largely based on his real life experience. Anyways, what I wrote at the time after reading it, <clears throat> the book is apparently an autobiographical story of a high school student stuck out in the countryside of Kyushu during the height of the student movement in Japan. Excuse me. He wants to get involved, but he doesn't know how to best go about it. He and his fellow students barricade the school at night. And then he decides as an act of rebellion to take a crap on the principal's desk. But then afterwards, he's worried about getting caught um, and that they're going to find out this, it's him. And he agonizes over it, like, was this a revol an act of revolutionary rebellion? Or was this just kind of something that a pervert does? Like, what, is he going to, when they find out it's him, are they going to label him a revolutionary hero or a pervert? Um, also, he and his friends organize a rock and art festival in their town. I really enjoyed this book. A lot. It was funny. And I felt like I identified a lot more with the confused idealism of this book than with the cynicism in Norwegian Wood. You know, like the author wants to get involved somehow, but he just doesn't know how to do it. That, that was me when I was young, kind of wanting to get involved in these larger political causes, but not really knowing how to do it. Um, some parts of the book don't really translate well. For example, the author mentions the awkwardness of trying to talk about these kind of new philosophers like Camus were using the countryside Kyushu dialect. So 
Yeah, Japan has a lot of kind of dialects once you get out of Tokyo. Kyushu is kind of famous for having a very strong rural dialect and he talks about how you just kind of felt stupid trying to talk about Camus in this rural dialect that everyone speaks in Kyushu. I got, I got the general point, but of course you can't really translate that at all. And I guess that's all part of the fun of reading a book from another country. If you can get your hands on it, I'd recommend it.